All right, welcome back everybody. Thanks for tuning in again today. Uh, today we are going to be doing a video about how to learn to code from home. Um, I've got three awesome websites that I'm going to show you and also a um, non-digital resource that you can get access to at home um, to do some coding or the principles of coding without having to be on a device. Um, really awesome video. In New Zealand, the digital curriculum has been implemented this year, so it's sort of an expectation that all students in New Zealand are going to be learning the principles around digital technology. Now, that digital curriculum has actually been broken into two main parts. So we have the computational thinking side of things, and then we also have the designing and developing digital outcomes. Now, this video around coding is uh, going to be focusing more on the computational thinking side of things. And before I do crank into those um, three websites that you can be visiting, um, I am just going to go through the principles of computational thinking and why and how um, these coding activities are actually linking to that. So I'm just going to get rid of the screen here and we're going to crank over to this. Now this is a slide from some uh, professional development that I did with um, my staff at my school and this is talking about uh, the idea of computational thinking and what it says there is that computational thinking is critical to understanding how the digital world works and it's harnessing the power of computers to solve tough problems. It's thinking in ways that a computer would think. And what it does do is it is an, enables us to think critically, not just about the benefits of certain technologies, but also the potential harm, ethical implications, and unintended consequences. Now, a computer by nature is able to do a whole lot of things with its power that the human brain just isn't able to comprehend or do and, and at the speed that a computer is able to. But there are actually uh, a few negatives around the way computer works as well. Um, there's four key principles there around uh, computational thinking. So we've got decomposition. Now decomposition is um, basically when you break down a problem and you explore it, what are the key parts? You'll notice that a lot of this stuff actually links to the maths problem solving that we've done in the previous video as well. The next thing is pattern recognition. So look for patterns and trends within a problem. We also do that in our word problems with our mathematics. Next one is abstraction. This is identifying similarities and differences among similar problems to work towards a solution. What do we already know? What have we seen? What's worked in the past? What hasn't worked in the past? And how can we use that knowledge to help us to solve the problem that's in front of us now? And the last step, and this is a key piece of vocab um, for all students when they're learning about computational thinking, is an algorithm. Now, an algorithm is developing a set of instructions step by step for solving the problem. Now, when we're thinking about algorithms, it's really important that we understand that a computer is incredibly literal. It follows the steps that are in front of it. So when we are coding, our instructions need to be incredibly specific um, and in the right order because a computer is not going to use intuition. It's going to follow the steps that you have put in front of it. Um, so when we are coding, we're going to start with block codes um, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using block code to actually create our own algorithms that we're going to use to try and solve a problem. Um, and the problem may be that the character needs to get somewhere, it needs to achieve something and whatever the, it is, you are coding uh, the steps that it is going to be doing or the following to complete that problem. Awesome. So um, the first resource that I want to share with you today um, around computer science is a website called CS Unplugged. Now, this is a website, but you can also actually get PDFs of all of these. This is amazing. If you haven't seen it or you haven't used it, um, you need to get around this. It is really, really awesome. It was developed by um, this primo dude called Tim Bell um, out of the University of Canterbury. Um, I've heard him speak at ULEARN before, and he's really, really awesome. Um, what happens is this website basically talks you through what computer science is and how do you teach computer science. But the big difference is that it teaches it all unplugged. That means that you're doing all of these activities without a device. Um, 
I've used these or seen these used and used them with kids through all primary school age from new entrants all the way up to year six at our school. They really, really are fantastic. And the awesome thing about them is they have all of these curriculum integrations. A lot, when I think of um, digital technologies, a lot of it is hugely integrated, particularly um, with our maths and the principles of maths around problem solving. But for people to follow a lot of this, it also actually links um, heavily into literacy. Um, so you can click on these curriculum integrations and it takes you through a whole lot of stuff around to the different um, curriculum areas and activities that you can do. I really, really think uh, if you haven't had a look at this, definitely go back and have a squiz. Um, the printable section is fantastic as well. Um, if you have a printer at home or you want to just use the PDFs, have a look through those. There's heaps of awesome ideas around computer science in there. Um, I, again, can't recommend this enough. I, I really, really do encourage you to have a look. Um, the second website that is really awesome is one called code.org. Now, code.org is around learning computer science again. Now, the one thing I really like about this is you can use this again with all ages. I've done this with new entrants all the way up to uh, year five and six. With younger students, it is um, important that they do need support for some of the reading, depending on how confident they are. I found that having um, some tua kanatena or some older students working with them can be really, really handy for this, just to help them out with the reading. Um, I usually head or get my kids to head straight to Hour of Code. These are um, hour-long tutorials around principles of coding. My students at the moment are loving this dance party one, but um, there's all sorts of stuff in here. Um, Star Wars Frozen, Flappy Bird, all sorts of things. Um, basically what this does is it works through block code. So if I click on the Frozen one here, for example, it's going to take me into a whole lot of steps um, that are going to get progressively harder, and it's going to teach me the basic ideas of coding as we go along. Now there, as you can see, there's videos um, at, with each new step. There is um, guides to help you work through them. And again, if your block coding isn't quite working, um, then it will give you instructions around how you can fix up your code. So I'm just going to skip this video. And it's giving me, like I say, a little bit of reading. And I'm going to create my first single line of code here. Now, this is my workspace. For most uh, block codes, you're going to have a workspace. You're going to have blocks available, and then it's going to show you actually what you're trying to do. So my first one here is I'm trying to create a single line of code. Now, I can see here that my character, Elsa, I just wanted to move forward. So I don't want her to do any turns, any left or right. I just wanted to go forward. So I just use that, and I drag that into my workspace. And you can see I've got two from two blocks there, so I've know, I know I've used the right amount of code. Again, a mass integration with our right turns and our degrees. Um, and it's going to get more and more complicated as we work our way through. Um, and then you go run. Awesome. I've done, done my first line of coding there, and it'll work me through into my next stage. So heaps of, of different contexts here, doesn't have to be frozen, uh, works through into all sorts of different levels of coding. Um, so that one is code.org, particularly the hour of code. I will put that link in the description box of this YouTube vid, and you can go straight there and check it out. All right, Rad, awesome. so um, next online resource is called um, Code Club Aotearoa. Um, again, if you haven't checked this out, it is well worth your time. Um, I have used this with students basically from year three up. Again, it does involve um, a bit of reading and particularly problem solving. Um, but I've seen students actually work on a lot on their terms of resilience um, and determination to get some of the stuff sorted. It is, this one is really engaging. Uh, but yes, you do have to be a reasonably strong reader. You can't just rely on the pictures for this one. Um, so I 
you can see here that you can use Scratch. A lot of you probably know Scratch, but you can also um, code through HTML, Python, Raspberry Pi, all sorts of different languages of coding. I tend to direct my students through to Scratch, and there you can see three different modules there that we can be choosing from. Now, the good thing about Code Club is you don't have to have a Scratch account. Now, I would recommend setting up your own Scratch account, and the reason is that if you do have your own Scratch account, um, anything that you do on Code Club will be you can save and you can come back to. If you don't have a Scratch account, that's fine. You can still use Scratch. It just means that your projects won't be saved. So if you work your way through a whole project um, and you click out of it at the end, awesome, you've done the learning, but you can't go back and have a look at it. It won't save. Um, so I've got students that have accounts and they save their progress. They share them with their parents at home or they go home and work on them themselves. Other students don't have um, accounts set up and that's fine because we work through, I usually give them in class enough time to work through a, a whole module um, and they usually do that in pairs as well. So say I click on this module one, it opens it up and it's giving me seven different activities that I can work through. Um, I'm just going to go into this rock band one. I really, really like Code Club because uh, it's really specific. It sets everything out and it takes you through more challenging coding than code.org does. And you have a little bit more control over what you're doing. So on the very first page of this one, it's going to tell me what I'm doing. It gives me an example of what I'm going to be making. It highlights what I'm going to be learning, what I'm going to need. I can do it online or offline. And if you're an educator, a teacher, and you want to have a look at it, you can have a little bit of information there. Key thing is you're always looking for these green buttons to move on to the next activities. Now, this is where some people get a little bit stuck, okay? So you need to read the instructions really carefully. So before you can start coding, you need to add a thing to code. And Scratch, these things are called sprites. Now, the first instruction is that I need to open a new Scratch project. Now, if I click on this link, it will take me to Scratch and it will open it up to the page that I need to do um, the Scratch project. Now, again, you can see that I'm not signed in and I can do this not signed in. If I do want my progress to be saved, I need to sign in. Now, this is my workspace here. This is where my coding will, my creation will come up. And these are all of my... Um, code steps that I can pull in my blocks. Sorry, that's the word I'm looking for. Now with Scratch, they're all color coded. So anything in blue is emotion, looks, sound, events, control, sensing, operators, variables, and my blocks. And there's three tabs here for my code, my costumes. So what are my sprites actually gonna look like? And then any sounds I'm gonna add. Through Scratch, you can create some really complicated, awesome games and all sorts of different things. Um, you probably don't need to start worrying about all of that stuff. Um, if you're new to coding, you just want to be working through these instructions here. So I have both tabs open and I'm going to go between them. Um, and now it's just a case of reading through and following the instructions. Um, when I have completed an instruction, I click tick and I know that I've done that one. I move on to the next one. Now with Scratch, if I am stuck on anything, you can. Um, get new or further instructions. So here, if I'm not sure about any of this stuff, I know I'm cranking through this quite quickly, you can continue to search through and it will give you more details about how to actually fix that up. Now, if I go to this project page, which again, I will link in the description box, there is a ton of projects on here that you can be working through. Um, Code Club, NZ, awesome website. Awesome. So um, last website, last resource is um, one called Code for Life, uh, particularly this Rapid Router page that I'm looking at, that you're looking at as well, hopefully. Um, I will, again, I'll put this in the description box of the video so you can head straight there. Um, this is another one that you can use with students of most ages. Um, I would recommend using something like code.org or this Rapid Router code for life before you have a go at the code club um, activities and projects 
Um, it's they're just a little bit more basic. You don't have quite as much choice around the blocks that you're using, and you learn some of the principles around um, repeat blocks and things like that before you crank into um, the full scratch array where you have all of these different blocks and, and things that you can be choosing from. So when I'm doing this rapid router, again, it starts basic and you work your way through. Now, the cool thing about Code for Life is you do not need an account. Um, you can log in and set up. I don't do this with my students um, because it's all broken down into these levels from one all the way through to 109 when you're going to start working through some Python coding. If you, um, and I teach year five and six um, mainly, so my students, when we do this, are capable of remembering what level they were up to. So we don't have to worry about um, logging in. It's just a time saver for me. When we have um, a certain amount of time that we're going to be doing some coding, I want to maximize that time. So I don't want to worry about them logging in if I don't have to. So they just need to remember the levels that they're up to. Again, you can start on getting started. Now start at level one, work your way through. Starts with the most basic principles of coding and works into things like Python. Um, again, you'll see it's going to give you a little bit of reading that you need to be able to work through. So I read the instructions, level one, and this is this is my uh, workspace. These are my instructions, my blocks here. It only gives me the blocks I need to be choosing from, which is really good. I don't need to go searching for everything like I would in Scratch. Here, it just gives me the blocks that I need. So it's a really good starting spot. Um, and then this is where my coding is actually going to happen. Now, basically, what it's telling me is anywhere where that red box is, I'm trying to get this truck to move forward to. So that's just come up because I've already done this level before. And it's auto-saved. I'm just dragging this out. Putting, connecting it on, that's my first line of code written. I know you can't actually see specific code in there, but remember that we are learning the principles of coding, and this is an algorithm. Any blocks of code that I pull down here, these are all steps of my algorithm that I'm creating. So when I've got that in, I click play, my truck moves, bang. Now, the awesome thing that I like about Code for Life is it gives you two scores. Did I achieve my goal? Yes, I managed to problem solve it to get the truck into the square. But it also gives you an algorithm score. Now, this isn't so important on level one, where my algorithm was one step. It was very easy. But what it does do in later levels is it's trying to see whether you are using the most efficient um, algorithm to achieve your goal. And in terms of repeat blocks, um, this is really important. So keep a look at your algorithm score. Um, again, Code for Life, really, really rad. You can work through each of the levels. You don't need a login, and it can take you all the way up to Python coding. Awesome team. So that is our coding video for today. Um, there's actually heaps and heaps of work in there for people to go and have a look at. Three awesome digital websites and one resource CS Unplugged that you could be working on, even if you don't have access to a device. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm going to keep the videos going. Thank you to everybody who's subscribed to the channel. Um, I really, really appreciate that. If you can share it around, that'd be awesome. Um, and I will try and uh, keep content rocking and rolling. Again, we're in lockdown here in New Zealand, so I don't have too much else to do other than digging up garden beds that I don't have plants to plant in. And there's only so many pictures of my cats I can take. So I'm going to keep um, uploading videos um, pretty consistently. Cheers for checking in. Thanks for the support. And I hope you have enjoyed it. Please um, get in touch with me through Facebook if you want, um, and I'm happy to take some requests around uh, videos and content for the future. All right, awesome team, kia kaha, enjoy the rest of your day.